Before we start today's show, today we want to give a big shout out to Buzz TV. Man, Buzz TV has some some really really good devices, man. Like this last year, um, they've come up with some good stuff, and this new year, whew, I'm excited to see what they got. Yo, it's gonna be straight fire. Some devices and features, because I don't want to say one or the other. With Buzz TV, it's hand in hand. They've dropped some fire devices and some amazing features that are always uh, taking things to the next level. Uh, we also have been in talks with Omni Labs Robotics, bringing their telecommunication devices and robots to the next level, bringing everybody closer together. Yeah, absolutely. These guys, their, their telepresence that you get, um, is very, very cool. If you guys don't know what telepresence is, is having a pretty much a robot in front of you where you are remoted somewhere else. And it's, it's like you're there physically, but not really physically. You're there through the vote robot. It's very, very cool. Uh, make sure you guys check them out in the description below. Make sure you guys do check out that link. Talking about devices and, and streaming and all that stuff, you also want to make sure that no matter what you do online, you stay protected. Um, there's so many VPN services out there. We talk about it all the time. Make sure that you guys try them out. You check them out. See which ones work best for you. Absolutely. Make sure you guys do check out those VPNs. Um, we do have a couple of them that we recommend in the description below. So make sure you guys do get those get, get just get protected guys so don't forget to check out the description below for all of these guys that we have shouted out today you know no matter where you guys are listening watching whatever from make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button that like drop us a comment and the reviews actually help us a great deal if you're looking to do anything for us in this year coming um, and beyond the reviews help other viewers like yourself find this podcast and enjoy it as well so thank you guys and with all that being said let's start the show. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> what the hell, guys? February, um, March? March, March rewinds of what the hell? What? The uh, hell? Yeah. So I don't know what the hell's been going on. I know there is just some stupid stuff out there, and I mean some dumb stuff. I don't understand. There's some dumb people. Like <laughs> some people make some poor choice of words. Like, well, I guess me for calling people dumb, but whatever. Um, I'm going to kick this off straight, man. Um, this kind of hits me a little bit. Um, so there's a story about uh, something that Nancy Pelosi from here in the States. I don't know if you know too much about. Um, and there's some people that are trying to fact check it. Of course, the Democrats. And there's some people that are trying to debunk it, the Democrats. And then there's the truth people in the Marine Corps saying like, nope, that actually happened. So, and I'm pretty sure we'll get some comments below. So let us know what you guys think about this, but I have to read this. Um, so <laughs> Pelosi said she wanted battle ready reinforcements because former president Trump supporters and the Kayon, K, 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 Kanon, Kanon, I forget what it's called, Kanon, uh, the, I, they're calling it the conspiracy group. Um, we're about to converge to DC. So it, it was that whole thing that happened back in January where they rushed. No, oh, man. <laughs> where they rushed Washington, DC. Um, and Nancy Pelosi saying that she wants the Marines there to protect them. So. Uh, Marine Corps. Uh, okay, so one of the guys in the Marine Corps, is, uh, Bur uh, man, I don't even know what his ranking is, and I'm going to get screwed over by this. Uh, I think he's a major. Uh, I think he's a major. I think he's a two star major. Uh, so, okay, uh, M Major General, if you guys don't know. So, he's a general. Um, 
two star general um burger that's his last name burger b-e-r-g-e-r don't be thinking about food there next level um, <laughs> he told nancy pelosi we don't work for you <laughs> go well, find your own country maybe not the biatch word but <laughs> <laughs> um they're they're i'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's just a bunch of nonsense here but um the marine corps doesn't work for the freaking house speaker the marine corps only answers to one person and that's whoever is president of the united states so if trump would have said hey i need you guys over here to make sure everything is secured and good to go they will show up if he doesn't call them they don't show up um it, and it doesn't really matter if you like them or hate them. It, it's whoever the commander in chief is, they will go and say, cool, this is what we got to do. Um, but Nancy Pelosi has been like, okay, let me explain one thing to you real quick. Before I go all crazy hardcore, this isn't like conspiracy theories. I dislike Nancy Pelosi to the T that lady that oh man i can i can go in deep on this thing but here's some things for you conspiracy theorists and this is not really a conspiracy theory this is something that could really happen if i don't know if you want to call it shit hit the fan but check this out it hasn't stopped hitting the fan <laughs> no no <laughs> so check, like like you, like like some of the democrats want her out of there too they're just like dude can we just get somebody else anybody but her um, so, th so this is what could happen. Let's just say, let's just say, um, so we know we have president Joe Biden and there's a lot of things that he is starting to echo what former president Trump said. And there's some people that are saying like, wait a minute, isn't that what Trump was saying? And it's just like, dude, shut up. This isn't about trump this isn't about biden okay <laughs> so check this out man if we've seen uh, uh president joe biden every now and then and i think we even talked to lee we talked to lee about this too how he hates that that president trump was calling now president biden sleepy joe yeah I and he's like it's, yeah a he's while like, back man yeah, he was like, it's not cool because, you know, people, older people and Alzheimer's and, you know, just things happen when you get older, you know. So a lot of people were kind of mad that that President Trump at that time was calling current President Joe Biden Sleepy Joe. And um, but there was times that you're just like, why is he so like not checked in with what's happening and you could tell every now and then you'll you can tell that he's kind of like thinking and he'll stutter or he'll mumble and it's just kind of like 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 he's got some kind of health issue for sure and if it hasn't hit him yet like i really hope it doesn't happen like like it, it's sad to see any older person it doesn't matter if you like the guy or hate the guy um but you could kind of see certain things that are starting to happen uh, to Joe Biden. So it's kind of scary, you know, what if now, now th this, this could actually happen. What if Nancy Pelosi says, Hey, let's get rid of Joe Biden and have the first female president, uh, Kamala Harris or Harris Kamala, whatever the, her, her, her name is Kamala. <laughs> and let's just say like they could actually She's been on a good one trying to freaking like get everybody out of office. Let's impeach that guy. Let's impeach that guy. Let's impeach that guy. The only one that's hit the mainstream is, is the impeachment for Trump, but she's tried to impeach a lot of other people. It's not, it's anybody who goes against her. We're going to impeach you. That's her MO. So Karen, dude, she's a freaking sit the flip down. Karen. <laughs> Holy crap, man. That's that. Yeah. He hit the nail in the head on that one. That's a Karen right there. And you know what? Some people like Nancy Pelosi, whatever, you know, to each their own. I'm not a Karen fan, but okay, dude. If she, if she 
gets in some whatever tissy fit whatever with Biden and says, let's impeach this guy because of he has health issues or whatever. Like it, like there's some certain things that, that she could just be like, let's flip it and boom, you're out. You're gone. Next thing you know, the VP's in charge. But how does she, she doesn't, have, what's her actual position? She's the, she's the, the, the speaker of the house. Hold so on. How does she have power? Hold on. To people Hold on. Let me get there first. Sit down, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So check it out. If, if Kamala, if she doesn't get along with, dude, how, how many, and this is no offense to women, but when you have two women in power, do they get along? What are the chances that two women in power, like you, like Nancy Pelosi just wants that power. And I, and you know what? I've worked with plenty of women that will get, they'll become managers, directors, all that stuff. But if you cross them in a certain way, women can cut deep. And I mean, hella deep. Like don't mess with the freaking woman's fury because holy hell, start planning your funeral today. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> dude, Pelosi, I could see like, com like freaking uh, the vice president right now. She's brand spanking new. If she pisses off freaking Pelosi, guess what? Out. Out. If she kicks her out, you know, who's the next person in line to run the country? Kamala. No, no. Kamala is the VP. Yeah. If okay. Kamala gets kicked out, who is in charge after that? Who who's the next person in line? Do would, you know? it, would it be the speaker? It'll be the House Speaker. Oh. Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> and hmm, she's the one that's pointing fingers to Democrats, to Republicans, especially Republicans. Like, like here's the thing. Right now, we haven't been in a situation in, in a in a in quite some time now where one party runs the house runs everything a majority you majority you yeah. got the you got the democrats running the freaking the, the house the presidency i think this i think the senate is i think it's it might i i know republicans are winning winning the senate at one point and now who knows what the hell's going on over there with that but there's so many lawsuits going on with like voter fraud and, and it's not even just the Republicans and Trump and all that stuff. Democrats are doing it quietly, very quietly. And the thing is that the media is not shedding this to light, but I, I, I watch you CNN every now and then I, I see what you're lying about, but check it out, man. Yeah. Throw them under the bus. Um, yeah. I get passionate about this crap because once you start messing with like my country, America, yeah, dude. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. This could easily happen where Pelosi gets mad or, 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 or wants to take Biden out because of mental health issues. And then later on doesn't like Kamala. So you're out of here. And then says, oh, guess what? I guess it's me. I'm in charge now. Vote me in. It it'll be you still need to be voted in at that point. No. So the way that the the House Speaker works is they vote that person in to be the House Speaker. The House votes on their mouthpiece, their Speaker. <laughs> you know, um, and they voted Nancy Pelosi. Now, did they regret that? Hell yeah, they did. Big time, fast. And, and they've been trying to find ways of booting her out, but somehow I think she's, I think she just got, I, I don't know if they just re elected her again for another two years, or if she has like a year left or two years left. I don't know. Um, so but there's some people that are trying to get rid of her though. Why doesn't the speaker's term match the president's term? I think it offsets. I forget how they do it. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, I have a lot it, of questions about this that I don't really care about the answers, by the way. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Politics isn't really my thing. It's I, I try I, I try to get myself wrapped around it just to understand. Um, 
Can I ask you a serious question? Go for it. Do you think being a Marine made you more passionate about politics? No. Okay. I was, I was, okay. I'm going to sound totally like a nerd right now. <laughs> when I was in school in junior high, I actually had a passion for history. Mm -hmm. I love history and I would just, I, I would go in and pick up the books and just start learning history. Um, I got a really interest that like a, just a really interest of Greek mythology. Um, and I used to study it like crazy dude. I used to nail, like I used to, Back then you used to ask me whatever. And I, and I could tell you the freaking tree lines, the family trees, who's where, who was born, when, who was in charge of what, all their different powers, like dude, everything. Who created um, the, the, the Jiro to everything <laughs> like, dude, I used to be, I used to be hardcore into that. And then I used to like find out how they govern themselves. And I used to compare it with how they used to govern themselves back in world war one, world war two, how our country here with the civil war, I used to get really involved within politics and government and, and how all that crap worked. So by the time I got to high school, I elected to take government classes, political classes, just to understand things better. And, and it didn't mean I wanted to be a politician. I just wanted to understand it better. That's it. Knowledge for no reason. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a reason you want to understand what's going on around society because of what governs society. Yeah, I guess. And so when I joined the Marines, I kind of had already like a respect for, you know, like, like I walked in to boot camp 19 years old. And one of my uh, corporals um, later on is 18 years old. He's slightly younger than I was, but I respected him because of his rank, you mm -hmm. know? And there's some people that we had that were like, when I became a Sergeant at the age, oh, what was I, 20, Two, 22, 21, 22, somewhere around there. I became a sergeant and I had a guy that just joined was a private first class and he was 28. I want to say he was like, I'm older than you. I know more than you. I know this than you. I know blah, 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 blah. And you like, he just, just very, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like just no respect to the ranks, no respect to just because I'm older, you got to respect me type of thing. Mm hmm. Um, so I, I was able to learn so much that I could put people's people in their, in their places, you know, like, like, I don't want to get too far into that incident, but, um, when I see this and I'm really glad this freaking general said, we don't work for you. And, and it goes on and he goes on and says more than just that. It, it, it's, it's more than just that, you know? Um, but Nancy Pelosi, um, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it home so that we can move with the next topic here, but Nancy Pelosi wanted, wanted the Marine Corps during Joe Biden's inauguration. She was saying, I want you guys here to protect us during the inauguration. And she's just, and, and, and the, uh, in the, in the Marine Corps, the 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 general said, listen, you. You are not the president. Elect President Biden is not the president. If President Trump says, hey. I need you here to make sure everything runs smooth. Gladly, we'll do it. But you are not my boss. Well, couldn't they get like the FBI or something to do it instead? They have their secret service. They have, I'm pretty sure they got FBI, CIA. Yeah. They have, a, they have, they have a lot. They have their own secret police. They have a lot of things already, but here's the thing. Who is the world afraid of when it comes to militaries? RCMP mounted horsemen. Oh my gosh. The Mounties. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you see the, hey, what are you doing down here? Eh? <laughs> it's, it's like, like, uh, the Germans called the Marines Taf Tafelhugen, which is translated to devil dogs. That's why the Marines are known as devil dogs. They they said that that 
I think it was during, oh my gosh, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to put my foot in my mouth if I don't, if I don't get this one right. I'm not going to say nothing because I'm going to have a, a freaking shit storm of Marines coming down on me. So when the Germans called us that, the reason why they called us that was because they heard a hell of barks coming towards them and hell followed them. They were getting shot at. They were getting bombed at. They were like, everything was happening to them. And they're just like, what the, it, like, imagine just this distortion of what the freak is going on here. And who is it? The Marine Corps. So our enemy gave us our, one of our nicknames, devil dogs. Um, there was a lot of countries that used to say, we need to call the world's 911 force. Who was it? Marines. They, it was, it was, we need to call the Marine Corps to help. That's why a lot of people, and it's interesting too. The same people that call this for help are the same people that are like, oh, why does the United States have to get involved with everything? Like, <laughs> dude, you freaking called us. Shut up. Just shut up. You called us. You like, like, here's something scary. China at one point asked for help. You want to know, you want to take a wild guess when that was, and we had to bail them out and help them and save their country from becoming slaves what? to Japan. That was a hint. Hiroshima? The World War II. Hiroshima. <laughs> yeah, Hiroshima was one thing that we scared the crap out of the Japanese. Something that we're definitely not proud of. But Chinese... Like Japan was overtaking the majority of China and, if, and they were the ones that were crying, please help us. The United States, we need help. So what did we do? We went in there, freaking destroyed everything. Literally, <laughs> literally we came in and just explosions. <laughs> and it's, it's, it was, and, and here's the thing too. It's, it's, we have a very good relationship with Japan now. Um, it, it's, it's some of, some of the history of what happened with decision makers back then, uh, you know, across both borders, like these people were lying about this and these people were lying about this and we were lying about that. And everybody was lying to each other and freaking explosions, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was, it was interesting. It was actually very interesting with how a lot of those things happen. And nowadays, Marines are just pretty much stand on ready right now. Like armies everywhere. The Marine Corps is definitely everywhere, but yeah, I, I, I can go further deeper into this thing, but, um, Oh, so, so, okay. I have to correct myself. So the general it's general David H Berger. He's the commandant of the Marine Corps before anybody yells at me for that. He's a commandant of the Marine Corps. He's the one that says, uh, sit down, Karen, you're not in charge of us. So, End of rant. I'm done with Nancy Pelosi. Let's vote her out. <laughs> well, speaking well, of people that are heading out, I guess, or I don't know, some kind of transition there. Uh, the person who is in charge of um, Fire TVs, Kindles, and Amazon Luna has decided to jump ship to Unity. Which, and, and this is all very, very interesting stuff to me because I know when I first saw this article to you, I said, this is coming after the person who uh, was one of the leads left Google Stadia. So there's a lot of interesting things that are going on in the market. There's a lot of new developments that are coming out. Um, a lot of new companies that are, are, I guess, merging ideas and creating new things. But the person that left, his name is, um, oh, where is it here? Mark Witten. Mark Witten, that's right. Now, he is the man, it says here, the man in charge of Fire TVs, Kindles, and more. So I have to be honest and say I've been pretty happy with the Fire TVs and Kindles up until recently. Recently, I'm finding them a little underpowered, a little not exciting anymore. Yeah, what's the biggest thing that they did? They, 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 they revamped the home screen of some of the fire TV devices. whoop to do We saw some of the leaked stuff that was coming out for um, the new 4K fire stick. Not really excited, right? They've done a great job with 
pushing their Amazon ecosystem, but I think they need to do a better job at pushing some of their hardware stuff. I don't know if he has something to do with it or whatever, but I thought I think that they've done a good job up until 2020. And now we got to really understand where we're going from here. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know if the next person that's going to be taking Mark's job uh, will we'll see things from a, a streamer's perspective, my perspective, your perspective, because I think you agree with a lot of the statements that I just said as well. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. I'm hoping that this is going to be uh, change is going to be good. I'm hoping. I wonder because you just said Google Stadia is going to be going, well, you know, like the guy left and Stadia is like they're not making they they fired pretty much their whole freaking team and they're going to go. They're going to outsource everything now. I wonder if Luna is going to be on the same boat. Like there's nothing special about Luna. Well, the interesting thing is that. Mark left. And he went to Unity. And Unity is a development platform for VR. So I'm curious to see if a lot of these people are going to make their ways over to these development platforms. And then it's going to be like an under-the-table kind of contract where they start subcontracting these things in instead of trying to do them in-house. Because you can't do everything in-house. You're never going to be good at everything. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Um, in this article that, that we're looking at, there's a comment here that says, uh, word of Google's decision to kill its first party Stadia Studios, vindication for Amazon's focus on providing access to existing games from partners like Ubisoft rather than developing its own Luna exclusive titles. Uh, companies make, ex and, and this is a quote from them, um, so companies make exclusive content to lure consumers. This is actually a good point. They make exclusive content to lure consumers to their products. Look at Nintendo and Netflix. No one would buy Nintendo systems without their games. 100%. Yeah. And same thing with Netflix. Netflix wouldn't have become so successful. Um, and I don't agree with this part. He says Netflix wouldn't have become so successful without their original shows. Netflix became successful because they were the only ones doing what they were doing for a long time. <laughs> Their original shows that they're coming out within the last couple years is new, but they've been around for like what? 15 years now, 20 years now. Ever. Yeah. Um, he goes on saying people complain about Xbox, not having enough first party games. And now Xbox owns Bethesda and a few other studios. Um, my point is if Luna doesn't have any exclusive games, what different what differentiates it from Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation now? I think what is the differentiating factor is how many more Amazon devices that are attached to a TV than some of the other stuff. But I mean, the market share is, is splitting now anyways, right? I mean, with Google's Chromecast and TiVo and all the other devices that are now coming out, you're going to be able to get to get access to Stadia through those devices, right? Mm -hmm. So the market share is splitting up a little bit more, but Amazon's had, it's been dominating that for a long time. I mean, it's mainly been Roku and Fire devices for the most part. That's been um, dominating your entertainment uh, smart experience when it comes to your TVs. Mm -hmm. So I guess to his point, how long can you use your brand power until you lose enough market share where it doesn't matter anymore? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a little torn, you know, like with this whole thing, it's, I don't know. I do agree with you that you said that some of this stuff is just not as good as it was not even exciting anymore. Yeah, so maybe something will open up. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. But with that being said, I um, wanted to talk about the whole situation with Texas. Do you know what's going on in Texas right now? So I have a good friend who's in Texas, and I talk to him every day. 
And I, I've just, I mean, the first, I guess, day that I talked to him after all this stuff was going on, he's like, I haven't had power all day. Um, I haven't had a hot water. He says, my cold water is working, but not, but not my hot water. So I'm talking to him for like, you know, just texting back and forth for like an hour. And then he's like, I thought I heard rain, but I figured out why my hot water is not working. Uh, it's a busted pipe. And I was like, dude, you got minus weather right now, like freezing weather. It's not going to be rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was the internal pipes in his house that was going for like three hours. <laughs> Shit. Crazy. So there's a couple things that's been going on. It's uh, like everybody knows. It's funny. When something happens to the United States, the world knows. <laughs> Like everybody knows, like there's fires in California. And then next level's over here. Like, Hey, there's a gender reveal that started this fire. I'm like, yeah, close to my house, jerk. <laughs> hey, but your more, most powerful weapon in the States is your media. Dude, that's, <laughs> all these fools. That's all they freaking do, man. They just spill the beans about every, like everybody knows it. it like literally this season on on the United States. <laughs> what season are we in now? What episode is it? <laughs> 2021. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, no, it, it would be season probably like 200 and, and, and oh man, 1775. Hold on. I, I'm going to try to do the math real quick. And you're like, wait, 246 years. The United what? States is two, 246 years old ish. <laughs> roughly okay <laughs> you're like hey don't start doing math we might get in trouble again <laughs> yeah, i'm not even gonna, i'm not even gonna try right now so um yeah they had this massive blackout and what's interesting is i was reading this thing that says texas power outage disaster millions of no power failure by ERCOT, not the freaking government people like people love to say the government did this the government did that are you guys like dumb? Like, okay, Ted Cruz, I don't know if you know this, but Ted Cruz, a senator from Texas, decided to leave to Cancun with his family. <laughs> yeah, he decided to leave to Cancun to his family. Now, deuces, okay, please. I probably have a whole bunch of Karens that are going to start like defending him and stuff. Or maybe tearing him down, I don't know. But listen, listen to me. Don't perk up just yet. What if, what if a senator did something in your state? Let that sink in for a second. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, l let me say this in a different way. Whatever state, if you live in the United States, whatever state that you're in, can you name your senator? Can you name the last thing he did something big for your state? Now, in California, I could say like, oh, yeah, Governor Newsom did this. Governor Newsom did this. Governor, Governor. Oh, wait, that's the governor. That's not the senator. Wait, who the hell is a senator for California? <sighs> Eats the hell out of me. I don't I don't remember who the senator for California is. But but here's the thing. Anytime we're going to blame somebody. It's the governor for not taking care of business. The oh, governor is the one that does a lot of stuff. The governor. Yeah. The governor. Now, Ted Cruz, he doesn't do crap. The only reason he's he's under scrutiny and everybody's talking crap about him. You know why? He ran for president. Oh, once. No. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> I guess you never really leave that limelight then, huh? So I know, like, for instance, in here, um, our, our mayor of uh the of toronto was like everyone's got to be in a pandemic you're all locked down don't go anywhere and then people would post on social media him at his cottage like well if we can't leave our house how come you can go to your cottage <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's crazy but i was while you were talking i was looking at some of this stuff and i'm trying to understand it maybe you you have a little bit more information but it looks like during the power outage there was these like pink electric service trucks that were providing energy but at an astronomical rate so if people needed power they could use it 
So I, I looked up a couple things because at first I saw an article where this lady woke up to a six thousand dollar electric bill, and I was like, "Whoa, what caused that?" <laughs> and then I saw this next one, right? And I was like, "Okay, so this article here says Scott Willem Willemby, an army veteran who lives on social security checks in Dallas, told the New York Times that unlike many who had no electricity during the freezing storms uh, that devastated the state, he suffered no power outage." But at a vast cost, with an electric uh, electric bill he received for keeping the power on during the storm, at sixteen thousand dollars. <laughs> what? Okay, look, there's this company out there <laughs> called Go Sun, and they and they have a they have a freaking they have a discount that dude. Here's a discount. Put the code in beyond the streams, or was it beyond? That was well, that was um that was Blendjet. I don't think we have a coupon code for. Do we have one for Gosun? I, I thought we did. If not, I'm gonna talk to Gosun to see what if we could get something going. Okay, look, and I know this is gonna be a clip. Everybody in Texas who who has this stupid bill or could get a bill possibly because you need power. There's this company called Gosun, and it's all based on solar panel. You the, the sun if the sun is out underneath the clouds. It you still get those solar rays. You, you you could still get a freaking sunburnt if it's cloudy outside, guys. Okay, so we're gonna leave it in the description below. Go sun. This isn't a freaking promo or nothing like that. I've been able to test their products. We've been able to interview them. They have some amazing stuff. Get freaking some solar. Like why? There $6, was thousand dollars, dude. You can live in your was, car. There, there was this, uh, um, oh my gosh, fake news. Here we go, dude. You ready for this one? Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Oh man. Okay. We saw the news and this was during this whole thing. And, and they were just like, oh, uh, Texas lost so much power. The poor people, the poor, this, the poor that. And I'm, and I'm thinking about my, my, uh, the, the guys from, I just watched are in Texas. You oh know? yeah. So I'm 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 hitting them up like how are you guys doing? Are you guys good? And and you know how the news is is that they try to exaggerate like every it's like dude, there's a power outage. There's nothing else you could do to exaggerate. There's a power outage. There's no power. There what are you going to say next? The walking dead is happening in Texas now. Calm down. You know what they did? Do you want to take the a wild guess? What? They were interviewing people saying like, we're running out of water. We found this really cool thing. And because we're getting so much snow, we're just melting it to drink. And it's just like. What? Oh, my. <laughs> you know, what? Well, yellow snow. You, you learned that pretty early growing up in Canada. That's the first thing I started thinking. <laughs> I started in my head. I, I, I started thinking like, wait a minute. So you're telling me nobody's got bottled water. You're telling me nobody like they started showing grocery stores being completely empty. And then they started making it sound like they just invented bread. It's just like, dude, you guys didn't know that snow melts. You didn't know that you could just grab that snow and probably put it in a bucket and it's going to turn into water. What if you didn't know I invented fire yesterday, dude? <laughs> hey, if anybody wants the freaking Rojas hairdo. I got this solution. Um, it's it, it's five ninety nine a month, and you could have you could have this full lock of hair. It only took me about four weeks to grow it from being almost bald. <laughs> In the description below. <laughs> so, just to kind of I, I guess paint a picture, because a lot of us, I, I guess in Canada, are used to cold weather. But we have to remind ourselves that we're talking about Texas, and some of the pictures that I've seen, like literally cars covered in ice like it's insane to see palm trees and ice icicles in the same picture right mm -hmm. so we have to understand that yes as a canadian right when i first started thinking about this i'm like oh you got that temperature well here it's colder it's this you know it's not about that it's about certain countries certain places in the world are climatized for certain temperatures and certain weather conditions right uh, I know uh, growing up as a Canadian, once the seasons start to change over to the winter, I go down to the basement, I cut off, you know, some of the, the outside water pipes to the, 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 the outside hoses. Like there's certain things that we do, right? 
But when you're living in a warm climate like Texas, you're not accustomed to it. Your piping is not accustomed to it. Your, mm -hmm. your buildings are not accustomed to this kind of weather. So when you get something like this, it is going to be an exponential kind of um, situation. Yeah. And just be prepared. It's, it's the thing is that Texas does get snow. It's not like, like this is the first time they've ever gotten snow, mm -hmm. but the, the, they just have they, they, like, you, like be smart about it. Like here in California, the, the, the thing is we get earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So if we don't prepare, you know what I mean? Like, like if you don't prepare for the worst, then when it actually happens, everyone's going to be going crazy. Like there's certain things that you just cannot control. Like, for example, if they were to say, if they're to say, uh, uh, okay, the, there's a earthquake and your whole house got sucked into the earth and you're, and you have nothing. Okay. S things like that. You just cannot like, That's you know, you can, yeah, you can only prepare for so much. Right. Um, now do I feel bad for people in Texas? Yes, but don't go on television looking like a fool and thinking like, oh dude, I just invented a new way how to make water. And it's and it, like, I, I love how the news does this. And then, oh, the, here's the, here's the beauty part about it in the description below. If anybody wants to donate, make sure you guys donate to here's my PayPal information, send it to friends and family. Don't be a dick. <laughs> it, dude, that's what they do. They, they try to be like, make sure you go to our website and you donate money for the cause. And it's just like, and, and I'll hear about this too. Like, um, and here, here in California, they had the whole fund about uh, for the fires. Mm -hmm. And they said here, you know, go to CBS.com, go to Fox.com, go to all these places.com. And all this money is going to be donated to there and there and there. Here's the thing. Did they announce what they actually did with that money? Think about it. I'm not yeah. saying that they didn't do anything with it. I'm not saying they did zero. I, all I'm saying is, did they announce what they actually did? Like, what are they claiming that they did? We just gave it to them and, and they figured it out. Why is the call to action always louder than the actual action? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if they said, hey, you know what? We funded a billion dollars. And with that billion dollars, we were able to restore everybody's homes and we were able to fix everybody's stuff. And it was just, um, we just helped everybody out. Dude, awesome. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, like for me, that, that'll be great. Uh, for me, that's, that's good news. Dude, you guys did that. You guys did that. Awesome. Good news doesn't make money. Come yeah, on, no kidding. keep that good news off the airwaves. <laughs> Speaking about making money, <laughs> we got Twitter that is apparently exploring super follows for creators to earn money. Now, this is something interesting because up until very recently, both Rojas and myself didn't give two craps about Twitter. Um, I've never really cared about it, never really wanted to learn how to use it i'm starting to use it a little bit more because of some of the um some of my interests when it comes to investing and and, and stuff like that i'm finding a lot of good information on there right uh rojas is on there now too and i think this is going to be a very interesting move because twitter um is one of the biggest platforms to be found and to connect with anyone like it is insane the amount of people on twitter like you have people like Elon Musk that can post one word and affect the whole stock market. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's insane the power that this social media has. And if we can start monetizing what we do on the social media platform, is there really a need for Facebook anymore? Because I left Facebook almost a year ago and I'm happy that I've left it, but it's been very difficult to grow the same following that I had on Facebook on other social media platforms. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think it's going to be very interesting. 
what this is going to mean. It says the social network is known for short posts that has been moving beyond its 280 characters, uh, includes getting more serious about experimenting with audio and disappearing messages and other ways for people to converse online. I know they've had some changes in regards to how videos are posted on there. I don't know a whole lot about that, but uh, their CEO, Jack Dorsey, says, we focused on public con uh, conversation as a use case and that use case is going to have multiple formats associated with it. So it looks like this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see where it goes. I wonder if they're going to do it like, uh, like YouTube that they have, they take 40% or whatever it is. Oh, here's, here's some good information right here. It says among new products, Twitter is exploring a super follow and tipping. The feature will let users follow a creator or a publisher on Twitter for a monthly fee. So it's kind of like a YouTube membership program. Yeah. That's what and I'm saying. I wonder how much, I wonder how much their cut is. Hmm. You know, I, 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 I kept thinking about if I want to start up that membership thing again, like within YouTube. Um, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually thinking about going a different route. Like, like YouTube just freaking, they, they, they 40%, they, they take 40 some percent. Like on a member, okay, for one, if the member, like the membership thing, the only thing they're adding extra YouTube on their end, yes, it is their private servers. The only thing they're making it is, is so that way the general public can't watch a video. That's it. They're making it, they make it where there's a privacy mode if you have this feature enabled. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know. I, in, in, in a sense, I'm almost sick of YouTube. I kind of not gonna lie yeah I'm, I'm like like their cut that they take is just i don't know it just sucks you know um so i'm still doing my videos on youtube because yeah. youtube is just the platform of you know it's it's like twitter it's like you just have to get twitter because everybody's on twitter um everybody uses youtube to market their stuff so that way you guys are watching videos like this but i'll be i'll be frank man um, the website that I've been building rojasentertainment.com, I have a membership thing that I'm putting in there that will go through PayPal and it's going to be like, Hey, there's going to be tabs in there. I'm going to embed videos on there. I'm going to do a lot of things within the website that people could go to and I'll make private links. Like I could still use, I could still do the shows that we do here for members only just make yeah. the video private. So only members can get the link for it. You know, there's ways around it. And even then, even if we didn't want to do like YouTube, there's other platforms that we can go on a live show for sure. And like, like I, I'm really looking into this membership thing and, and having the, the Rojas exclusive members only on the website where if I use PayPal and if I charge like, you know, like five bucks or whatever, six bucks, they only take a couple cents and I'll have different levels. Um, I'm also, I also have a thing that I can embed for giveaways. Anybody that's a member, they just go in and they could enter in any giveaway that they want. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we do the raffle, all we do is we do a little countdown thing and the, and the computer does its thing. I do absolutely nothing. That's my like, dude. That's awesome. This thing that is talking about with the super follows with Twitter, it kind of gets me a little bit excited. Um, I've been kind of. I'm not going to lie, demotivated with YouTube. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoy is our live streams and my live streams that I do on on, on, on my channel, right? right? Now, with what it's saying in this article is that uh, it looks like it starts off if they wanted to like join your Twitter membership at $4.99, but you're going to have the ability to customize that. And there's also the ability to do like super chats or donations, right? Mm -hmm. And you also have the ability to live stream on Twitter. So once this really goes, do I need YouTube anymore? So I think that we need a little bit more information. We do also need to know what their cut is. But I think that this makes sense. We've talked about YouTube not having certain things that Twitter has. Why do we have to communicate to YouTube through Twitter? Why doesn't YouTube have a messaging board? 
it doesn't like there's it doesn't make sense. We're going into 2021 and you have to communicate to YouTube on somebody else's social media platform. YouTube right. doesn't own Twitter. Why are they active and actively doing their customer service through another social media? Like to me, that's like I think it's because so when I first joined Twitter, I saw people complaining left and right to Twitter and they were tagging them. And then they're always in there saying like, oh, yeah. Send us some more information and we could try to help you out. Just give us some more details and we could try to help you out. They've always, I, I think because they're in the limelight right there, they're just like, oh, wait, people could tag us and maybe we should make a group. So that way we could try to help troubleshoot people. Um, So it's, I, I don't know, man. I, I like, I know Google is such a juggernaut and YouTube is such a juggernaut. And for anybody to come out with another platform to compete against YouTube is going to be, like you, you got to be ready on point with all your rules and regulations and, and, and a support team to be able to talk to people and help people um, and be understanding. Like, like one of the things too, like, I, you know what? I hope YouTube actually here. Here's a clip. YouTube be understanding when you guys change a rule, when you guys change a rule and then all of a sudden you strike a grip ton of videos because you've decided to change something or update something or to clarify something. If you guys strike somebody, how is that fair at that point? Like you guys need to do, you guys need to do your due diligence and say, Hey, all these videos are going to be affected due to this new change. What do you want to do and give us the options? Give us the options to be like, no, I don't think I've, 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 I've hit the algorithm bad. I don't think this goes against your community guidelines or you know what? Yes. Delete this video. I don't want to be in trouble or yes. Let me edit this video to take out what is inappropriate. Like you guys need to give us an opportunity to say like, cool. If you guys change something, then let me fix it instead of being freaking like like dude it, it's 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 a it, it it's it's become an uncomfortable place to be at and there's a lot of people out there joking about it like oh i wonder if i'm gonna get stroked for this for for saying that you know even freedom of speech just hey i'm not gonna show nothing let me just express something so youtube hear me out if you guys could put something like that in place, it'll probably make a lot of people happy. And you know what? If you got to temporarily shut that video down while it gets resolved, okay, I can see that. Sure, shut it down so it's not available for everybody. If you say, if, if I'm saying like, no, I don't believe it. And if your system's like, nope, this actually does hit it. Okay, then do what you need to do. But at least give us the opportunity to say like, hey, yeah, you know what? Maybe, may, maybe with the new rule, this could be possibly wrong. So I'll just go ahead and delete it and get familiarized with the new rules. Because when you guys keep fire changing it like that over and over and over and over and over, how the hell are we supposed to keep up with that? I don't know. Maybe they need to do that 40% cut that they take from our donations and invest that into a personal person that reviews our actual content. No kidding. <laughs> like a real no. live person. I want a real person. I want a real boy. Ah, oh boy. <laughs> Here, we Here we go. So um, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is reportedly under SEC investigation over Dogecoin tweets. So um, Elon Musk has been every now and then saying like, oh, uh, this is going to be really good. And all of a sudden everybody buys and whoop, there whoop. goes the stock. And then he'll say like, I think this is a little bit overpriced. And then everybody's like, oh, I got to sell it. And everybody sells and pew, goes right back down. Um, it's very interesting how people do freak out like that, where it's just like, damn, dude, like calm down, guys. It's it's <laughs> it's OK if he says something that. You know what? And I know I know next level and I have talked about this and, and there's some conspiracy theories going around. Some of it makes sense. Um, if, if Elon Musk would have put $1.5 billion or whatever it was in the first quarter of the year, and then it drops like crazy and he ends up losing the first quarter, he could claim it as a loss. Sure. Sure. And, and, and you know what? And I know next level really wants to say something about this, but it could maybe not make him the richest man in the world. Okay. Which he's not anymore. 
which he's not right now. Whatever. Doc Ock is the richest. Whatever. <laughs> Would you say Doc Squiffy's the richest? Damn no, you, Doc Squiffy. Because <laughs> I, I call I call Jeff Bezos Doc Ock because he's built those mechanical arms. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 here's the thing: if he's not the richest billionaire in the world, oh, so what? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like so so what if he's not okay? He gets to claim it as a loss, and then he's gonna throw all his money in um in something else. It's it's, it's just your funds go down right before you got to claim your taxes. Oh, I got a loss. I can't pay my taxes this year. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just I don't know, man. <laughs> You know, it's a volatile time for your investments, but it's also a good time to invest into some of the things that are down right now. So just because he's not the richest person in the world doesn't mean that when Bitcoin goes from, what is it at, like 45,000 US to 100,000 by the end of the year, that his investments is not going to become exponential again. And then he reclaims his throne on Mars mm -hmm. to the moon, to the moon. I don't understand how this is just a random thought about Elon, but I don't understand how he wants to populate Mars so bad that he and he doesn't believe in aliens. I've watched interviews with him and he's like, I don't believe in aliens. And I'm like, dude, how do you not believe in aliens if you're trying to populate another planet? If you've thought about populating another planet, well, I mean, he doesn't even think there's another intelligent life out there but the, <laughs> this universe is huge we can't say that we're the only I, I don't i don't buy it i just don't why is there an area of 51 52 51 51 i don't understand uh, like there has to be men in black taught us that they've been here for years <laughs> oh men in black good old men in black okay um Next topic, Silver Sparrow malware hatched on 30,000 Max. Crazy, right? Because majority of people that I talk to, I'm like, why are you using Apple products? Oh, they're safe. They're secure. They're this, they're that. And then 30,000 Max get attacked by this malware. Crazy. Uh, nearly 30,000 Max in 153 countries have been infected with a new malware strain that security research are calling the Silver Sparrow. Discovered by researchers at Red Canary, the malware has been sitting on it, host waiting for a payload that never arrived. Uh, so they say that Thursday, sorry, um, they say that though we haven't observed Silver Sparrow delivering additional malicious payloads yet, its forward looking M1 chip compatible uh, global research, relatively high infection rate. And the operational maturity suggests Silver Sparrow is reasonably serious threat, uniquely, uh, uniquely positioned to deliver a potential impact payload at a moment's notice. So I guess it's like a sleeper. Mm. It's just going to wake up and then what? What's are they just going to say it's going to take your money, take your data, take everything, take hide your kids, hide your wife, <laughs> hide your chicken wings. I don't, I don't know. know. It, it's just, it's crazy with the malware and the cyber securities and all this crap. And, th and you know what, this, this goes hand in hand with the other topic that we're going to talk about too, um, where TikTok has to pay 92 million to settle lawsuits over data, data privacy. It, it's, it's with these malwares and, and data and whatever the hell you're doing with the internet. Um, you know, like, I don't know, we could talk about getting yourself protected to or blue to the face. But unless you actually do something, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, I don't know, man. Like, like, like to me, if you have a key for your house, if you have a, if you have a, if you have to lock your door for your car, when you go into your house, if you have a security password on your phone, you know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know. To me, it's, it's, it just makes sense to put some sort of security when you're online, you just, it, it just, it just makes sense. It just, I don't know. Here, makes... Here's something, here's something interesting. I know that you have external hard drives. I've, I have external hard drives. Um, some of our information that's really important to us, or we even have multiple hard drives, right? We store it on several hard drives. Like a lot of the videos that we record, we store them on something, right? You usually have something that you record them to the, um, 
the director of Malwarebytes said that this spyware that they were talking about could have possibly been on these devices for a period of time and already ran its course. It's it, it almost sounds like to me that we should be formatting our devices periodically and mm -hmm. just cleaning everything off of it. Back up all the files that you need to your cloud or to um, to a local like whatever you have a NAS device or whatever. I mean, clouds are they still have the potential to be hacked, but they might be safer than you browsing websites you shouldn't be on. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if we are doing our due diligence and backing up our data, maybe we should be wiping our phones. Maybe we should be wiping our computers and just playing it safe as well as being protected at the same time, because we never know what's going to slip through the gates at any particular time. Shoot. Even condoms are 99% accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at next level. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta be 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 safe, protect yourself in all ways possible. <laughs> oh man! So I hope you guys found uh, this "what the hell" episode. We try to bring like things that will make you say, "What the hell is what the hell is going on here, guys?" So hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let us know. Uh, we always tell people leave us a comment. Leave us a comment below. Um, you never know. You know, you just don't know what's happening. Sometimes we're going to miss something. Um, and we're doing this whole weekly news thing where we're trying to keep you guys going because there's so much stuff happening every freaking week. So um, the weekly, new, weekly news updates are not really what the hells is just like, hey, this is what's going on. Make sure you guys are updated. Um, and the other thing is, keep in mind, we are now doing live shows on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, the cool thing about those is, is you guys are in the chat. We're talking about topics and we'll throw up your comments up there that's related to the chat. Um, and if you have anything specific that you guys want us to talk about, um, put it in the comment section below. Like, like, like you don't, you don't have, you're not limited to put one comment. If you wanna put multiple comments, go for it. And, and we definitely like to read what you guys say. We definitely like to see what you guys are are doing and talking about. So, um, yeah. Anything else you got to say before we skedaddle? Um, we got a couple of reviews. So on on Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts is the biggest podcast in the world. They have they dominate the market. So, um, as always, we always ask you guys leave us a review. I'm not going to tell you to leave us a five star. Just leave us anything. Say hey, what's up? How you doing, homies? I don't care. Um, the reviews, I've read them. They're they're awesome. Thank you guys for leaving your feedback. But uh, it's the only way to really make a dent in the, uh, the 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 podcast area is to get some of these reviews on there. So if you guys enjoy the content that we are creating, we're always changing our format up to make sure that it's better for you guys. And I think that where we started from and where we are today is so it, it's such a good path that we're on now. And I'm excited to see what we're going to be producing tomorrow, next week, a month from now. And you guys are, I'm excited what we can, uh, what we can do for you guys and what we can deliver. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. Um, a lot of good comments uh, in regards to people saying, how do you guys know about all this stuff? We're just like you guys. We watch the news. And if we catch something that catches our eye, we're able to share it with you guys and put it in a way where it's easier to digest than trying to keep updated with everything. We don't catch everything. So if there's something we don't catch, then feel free to drop it in something. Maybe we'll do a show on a single topic or a single whatever, because we're always looking for content to create. So yeah, ideas are great. Thank you guys again. Yeah, and stay tuned to the next uh, breaking news, because you never know what's going to happen, or weekly news, or any types of Beyond the Streams presents. Uh, got some pretty cool people coming in for some interviews, so... Yeah, stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Peace, Peace. to the moon. To the moon.